All right, well, hello and welcome, everybody. Today is Tuesday, March 31st, 2020, and today I'm making floor system test number 50. This is a video I've been looking forward to doing for the past couple weeks, and I've been telling you guys about it, and I know a couple of you are looking forward to it as well. So here it is. I hope you enjoy. Before I get the video started, I just want to say a couple things. Number one, if you hear any noise in the background, to disregard it. There is some... Um, there are some renovations going on in one of the units behind me. And number two, this will be a longer video than usual. There will be a lot of talking in this video. So what I'm going to do is put a timestamp down in the description for those of you who would not like to hear me talk and just want to get on to the good part of the video. But if you want to keep listening, I'm going to give some uh, interesting information. So with that being said, let's get the video started. So uh, what do I have for today's setup? This is probably going to be one of my craziest, if not my craziest, um, system setup I've done thus far. If anything, my loudest. Um, what I'm doing today is a simulation slash replica system of the fire alarm system in my high school. Now, for those of you who don't know, I graduated high school coming up on three years now, May 2017. So I'm going to be taking a little bit of a walk down memory lane, but the memories aren't really that distant. So uh, what I have set up here, and this is not everything. This is just part of it. The system goes over here and also right over there. You guys can see where this is going. What this is, is pretty much um, a, a replica system that is, for the most part, accurate down to the model number. Um, I can't guarantee it's going to be 100% accurate, but if not 100% accurate, uh, pretty darn close to 100% accurate uh, to the alarms that my high school has. What I also have down here, and you guys may laugh at this, I have these uh, school maps. These are actual maps of my high school. Um, I got these when I was in high school and I saved a lot of old papers from high school and uh, these were still in there and I just copied them onto fresh paper and what I did is I used a highlighter to indicate the um, different types of fire alarm notification appliances throughout the school. So um, I thought this was a pretty interesting way for you guys to get a fire alarm tour of the school without actually getting a tour. So I'm going to start with the areas I have highlighted in blue and explain those. The areas highlighted in blue are the parts of the school that were e either added on or renovated sometime around um, 2005 to 2006. Now, uh, these parts of the school have Simplex 4903 and 4904 Smart Sync True Alerts. So what I ha have here is uh, my new Simplex 4903-9418 Smart Sync True Alert Horn Strobe. I suspect this is pretty much one of the exact models they used in the installation in my school. Um, this was, so, like I said, this was sometime around 2005. I don't sus suspect these were um, the older four-wire true alerts that um, were selectable. And I also know they were not the newer 4906 uh, true alerts because these were fixed Candela devices and they were synchronized. So um, the 9417, 9418, and 9419 true alerts are my best guess as to what um, the true alerts were in the school. So I have the um, 9418 here. It is a 75 Candela device. Next to it, I have my Simplex uh, true alert 4904-9332 75 Candela strobe. And... Uh, I don't know if this is the exact model. They used some of these in the bathrooms and stuff like that. I don't know if this is the exact model 
to what was in my school, but it's pretty darn close. The only thing that is not visually accurate about it is that it does not have the True Alert stamp on it, but I don't really care, you know. Um, it's close enough and it, it gets the point across. So these were installed throughout the school. Um, the school probably had more of these than any other type of notification appliance, and these things were installed not only in the hallways, but in a lot of the classrooms as well. So uh, that was fun sitting in class during a fire drill. Um, the next part of the school I'm going to move on to is the math wing. This part of the school was added on in 1999. And uh, what that part of the school has are uh, simplex uh, 4903 rectangular horn strobes and simplex 4904 single gang um, strobes. So I'm going to start with the horn strobes. Like I said, I don't know what the exact models on these were, but more than likely they were 4903, 9236, 9237, and 9238 horn strobes due to the time that they were installed and um, around that time these were some of the most popular um, of these models installed. So these are the Screecher horns. Um, they were not the newer sounding True Alert horns and they were also not electromechanical horns. So I had to buy this guy off of eBay too. It is a 4903-9236 with the 15 Candela strobe. They had these installed out in the hallways. In the classrooms, they had um, these single gang remote strobes installed. My guess is the ones in the classrooms were 4904-9137s. I believe um, in place of the Candela sticker, that actually had the candela marked on it. I believe they had the um, the green star stickers to indicate 30 candela. But I didn't worry about buying the exact model. I didn't want to waste my money with that since I had I have one right here that's nearly identical, which is the um, 4904-9176. Um, this model is a 15 candela. So that covers the part of the school that was added on in uh, 1999. Let's go ahead and move on to the original parts of the school, or actually some of these original parts of the school were renovated too, but they just kept in the existing um, devices. These parts of the school highlighted in orange, in both the um, upper and lower floors, have simplex 2901-9838 horns, on 4903-9101 light plates. Now this is also a device I bought off of eBay. I already have three uh, 9838 horns but I did not have the 9101 strobe plate so I just ended up buying the whole device. So now I have a total of four 9838 horns in my collection. But like I said this is exactly what they had installed out in the hallways in the um, with the original fire alarm system in the school so they only had these out in the halls they a couple of the bigger rooms like the photography room um, had these inside but there were no remote strobes in the rest of the classrooms so there's that um, now I will go over a couple other things nothing really major the um, small areas I have highlighted in yellow indicate uh, replacement devices I don't have these replacement devices um, in this simulation. It's you know just kind of pointless, you know, since they were um, just single devices replacing older ones. But on the first floor there was a Wheelock MT that um, replaced a, a 9838 horn strobe combo, and then um, on the second floor there was, believe it or not, an EST LED Genesis device that's replaced also replaced a, a 9838 horn strobe combo. Um, I'll talk about the initiating devices on the system really quick. Um, I'll start by saying the smoke detectors, I never pay any attention to those. I really um, don't care about them too much. The pull stations, a lot of the pull stations throughout the building were simplex, single action and dual action um, T-bars. 
just like this one, these were either MapNet or IDNet addressable pull stations. And the reason why I know they're addressable is because a lot of them had the uh, device address written either right there or somewhere around here or whatever. But these were addressable IDNet or MapNet uh, pull stations they had installed in the building, um, mostly in the areas where the true alerts were. In the original parts of the building, to go with the um, horn strobe combos, they had 4251-20 uh, pull stations for the most part. Um, they also had maybe two or three 4251-30 break glass pull stations with the break glass frames removed. And um, some of the pull stations in the school were all covered, or some of them uh, rather were covered by STI stopper covers. So um, that pretty much goes over the entire system. Actually, no, I'll talk about the panel really quick for those of you who are curious about what uh, panel the school had or panels. I actually uh, don't know. Um, I suspect it was either the main panel was either a 4100 Classic or a 40, uh, 4020, possibly. Um, I don't know if it was one panel or two panels. I don't know if they added on um, a panel and left an existing panel in and tied them together to make one big system, or if they took out an old panel and um, put in a replacement panel. But like I said, I do know it was either it was either a 4100 series or a 4020 because the building had. 24603-9101 annunciators, um, one in the um, main office and one in the vestibule uh, when you walked in the main entrance. So that pretty much covers the whole system in my high school. It was all set on continuous. So um, like I was saying before with the true alerts, especially if you were sitting in your um, English or foreign language or in your uh, driver's ed or your PE or your health uh, classes, you would have the heck scared out of you. These things were flipping loud. Like I said, the whole system was uh, on continuous and um, it definitely could cause a scare when they set it off unexpectedly. So that's pretty much the whole system. I have it all set up right here and ready to go. Let me show you guys how I have these devices wired up really quick. On the 4010, I have the uh, 4099-9003, um, as well as the True Alerts. So I have both True Alerts wired onto NAC1 of the 4010. NAC2 is not being used. And uh, on the 4005, I have the 4251-20 and uh, everything else on the system. The um, 9236 and the 9838 are on NAC1, while the 9176 is on NAC2. So that will continue flashing until the system is reset. And of course, since those are smart sync true alerts, they will continue to flash until the system has been reset and they will be synchronized. So, I think it's about time to get started with the test. I'm going to go ahead and set the camera down and put on some hearing protection really quick. Um, I'm not going to run this for very long. Pretty much just long enough to uh, get the point across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the 4010 system first so you guys can hear the uh, true alert and then I'll give it about two seconds and uh, pull the 4251-20, activate the 4005, and you guys will hear the rest of the system. So, here we go. Three, two, one.
All right. Well, there you guys go. That was um, a pretty darn accurate representation of what the fire alarm sounded like at my high school. Absolute craziness. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the camera down and reset the pull stations really quick. Let's do this. Come on, this key, s not key switch, but uh, key lock rather likes to give me trouble sometimes. So, there you guys go. I'm going to go ahead and put a reset in the 4010 and a reset in the 4005. That's about it. Those smart sync true alerts are uh, pretty darn cool. In the uh, field house at my high school, they had a whole crap ton of these installed. They were installed around the whole perimeter of the uh, field house. And when uh, I was in there, seeing them all go off, all the strobes in perfect sync, it was pretty neat. So now I'm waiting for the 4005 to reset. And there it goes. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, unique and crazy floor system test number 50. Um, there will be more to come. I'm hoping to get some more stuff here pretty soon and uh, just uh, look for some more fire alarm content pretty soon. So thank you guys very much for watching. And uh, as always, stay safe and healthy. Have a good day.